Hey, hi, hi, Jason, Kieran Bracken here, and Nick Easter. There we uh, are. Jason. What's up? What's up, hey, fellas? How's how's the homeschooling? You look like you look very intelligent with those glasses. Hey. You look like you. <laughs> Listen, it was a. Uh, we got done just in time for me to make this podcast happen. I'm telling you, man, it's it's touch and go being a teacher. <laughs> good, good discipline, mate. Good discipline you're installing there. Hey, Listen, man, it is no joke. Thanks so much for uh, for coming on the show. It's great to have you, and um, it, it, there's lots of things to talk about. But uh, myself and Nick Nick East were talking about whether you'd have made uh, a really good rugby player. And I'm just looking at your beautiful looks. You know, we'd have ruined those looks, my friend. I'm seriously. Thank God you had that helmet on to sort of like protect that pretty face of yours. Because Nick, we've got some ugly rugby players. Look at him. He'd have never made it in rugby union. No, nah, mate. And you, you, you could have worn a scrum cap, but I wouldn't have saved you. That wouldn't have saved you. <laughs> See, I knew what sport to pick. I knew how tough I was not. So I did the, I did the right <laughs> thing. We, we could put our record then, can we? We can put our record. I don't know whether you. I don't know whether you know. I think you probably do. The market uh, king put out a tweet last week. Uh, are you aware of that, Jason? I did. I saw that. I, yeah. I, I, I saw that. Yep. And uh, I think uh, Bra Brax, have you got it up exactly verbatim? What what he said? Was, oh no, he he just, just said basically listeners. if if he was if he was if he played rugby he'd dominate it and there's been dominate more easily. Dominate, dominate easily. Dominate easily. Don't forget yeah. that. Yeah. Let, 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 let's think about this. First of all, let's 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 talk about what position he played. He was a punter, right? Yeah. I mean, he wasn't hitting anybody. So uh, the fact that he threw that out there, he doesn't even know the physicalities of the NFL, let alone rugby. So you just got to you got to understand who the messenger is on that one. And uh, he does not represent the I, NFL I think, and how I think we think about rugby. I think rugby. his Twitter account got hacked, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. he, he better claim that. that, that that's better because he doesn't want guys like you coming after him. <laughs> well, we wouldn't be able to catch him probably, to be fair. <laughs> No, so we're just interested in the crossover, and uh, well, what's your take on Christian Wade? Because he was he was such a great rugby union player, and all when I, I, we've seen his first few touches uh, in American football, and we're wondering why he's not suddenly starring in the main team and stuff like that. But uh, is it going to take him time to to make the cut in the in the main team? Yeah, it's definitely going to take time. What well, what you did see in the preseason was you saw the ability that we all knew about. You saw his ability to make people miss. His footwork was uh, extremely impressive. I didn't know he was going to be that explosive. I mean, when the guy got the ball and he saw an opening, I was in shock at the ability for him to just run away from defenders. So you know he can run with the ball. The hard part of his position is the other things, pass blocking. Uh, being able to recognize who to pick up because you got to protect the most important asset on the team, which is the quarterback. So yeah. things like that take time. And that's why he has to uh, be in the program and get used to those things. As far as running the ball, we all know he has the skill set to do so. And we saw it on display in the preseason. It's just it's a little bit like rugby, isn't it? It's the things that you don't see that aren't, that aren't obvious to the eye on television, is it? That, uh, the nuances of the game that actually make a, a top, well, a, a top international, or a top, a world class player, isn't it? It's exactly the same in that. And you know, you need to, you need to do your apprenticeship, don't you? You need to do the hard yards. Yes, yeah, the small things, right? I mean, we, you know, they try to act like our sport isn't uh, all about being intelligent, but it is. You have to be able to adjust on the fly. Things are moving so fast. You have to make decisions, and those are hard things to do. Mentally, you have to condition yourself to be able to do so. And he's at the beginning stages of that. But I look forward to him having a lot of success because to get to where he has and advance this fast, I attribute to him being a top-level rugby player. Because I told him when he first started, I said, the one thing you don't have to learn is how to be a pro. And a lot of times, people need to learn that before they can achieve anything. And, and and Jason, the big the big thing, the big debate now, and the, the big talk over here in Europe is about uh, is about rugby union trying to take off in America. There's quite a few players, professional uh, and very well known players from England and from South Africa who are, are going to and signing up to play in the MLR. And there's this big now talk of the NRFL, which is which is basically going to be a new league in a couple of years in America, whereby 
players who, who are trying out in the NFL don't quite make it are then going to get sit into this potentially into this league. Now we've always and I've played in America and God, you guys can hit. I mean, it's <coughs> like it's proper. I know what it feels like to be hit. It's un- unbelievable by you American guys, but you are in reality a sleeping giant because you can see what you can do with the athletes you have in NFL. Can you imagine just some of those? You know, went into to this other rug, uh, rugby union league out in America. It could be amazing for you. Yeah, I love this because, like you said, there's a ton of talent, and it's hard enough to be in uh, make it on an NFL team. But you got this pool of players that just need to be exposed to the sport of rugby. I always thought if I was exposed to it, I would have played it. Also, I would have probably been a professional, but I would have loved to entertain it. And I think that now that it will be over in the states. And they will have a league that people can go out and play in. Well, it's already over the states, but they have a league that guys can go play in. I think it's tremendous for the sports. Sports is worldwide. It is no longer regional. So the exposure to the U.S. market is key. Sorry, fellas. I was rushing, man. I was eating some vegetables trying to get on this show. And uh, I think I ate them too fast, man. You know, I only had a little bit of time. You've got a carrot in your throat, mate. He's getting worried that we might be asking to play some. What, what, Nick, looking at him, what position do you think you play? Hooker or wing? What do nah, you like mate, he's a winger. He's a winger to me. Winger or outside centre? Um, yeah. Jason, how, how much is rugby played in schools now um, compared to, say, 20 years ago, if there is any difference? I, I mean, I know it's a quite a broad question. You've got to have a knowledge right. of a lot of, a lot of schools um, in, different, in different sort of areas, socioeconomic areas as well in, in America. Yeah. But if you do sort of have a gauge on that, I mean, has, has it grown much um, amongst participation in schools over there? It's definitely grown, but it's more of a club sport. It's not in the schools. Okay. It's more you have to join your local club. Uh, my first time I really was exposed to it on the West Coast of the United States was when I got to university at UCLA, and they had a club team. And yeah. I was able to watch it then. I, I had seen it previously, but up close and personal. So it's a thing to where you would have – you would be involved with your local club, and it is a regional sport. It's not. Uh, it, it is. It's more. I would say it's heavier on the east coast of the United States than on the west. So it's, you know, club sports over here. If, you know, so if you think about athletics, you know, athletics generally you join an athletics club. It is probably for the guys or, or, or the girls that have an have a innate ability there. You know, have a bit of talent or are especially focused on that particular discipline, whatever it might be, whatever sport, or they've got very pushy parents. So, whereas at school, um, you would hope that most of the time, you know, they have the freedom to sort of discover themselves, you know, playing it for maybe three, four years compulsory, whatever it might be, or an option or playing it, you know, at, at lunch break and all that sort of stuff. So there's still massive room, isn't there, for growth, if, if that could be a possibility over there. But I guess, you know, you're competing with, a lot of other sports. Yeah, but you said something that's totally right. If you put it in the schools and people have exposure to it, more people will pick it up. It's a great sport, but you have to have, you have, to have the opportunity to go out there and see uh, not, if your skills fit it and if you like it. And, you know, that, that's how sports grow. Yeah. So, so, so Jason, just want to just get your thoughts on. Um, obviously, there's a movement are you within sitting, sport. Are you sitting on the bog now, Kieran? Is that what I'm you? Not, I'm not. <laughs> I, 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 I've just put my charger in. My battery was going. <laughs> you, know, so, you don't know what's happening on this call. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jason, what's your uh, what's your take on the you know the Black Lives Matter? We saw this you know the terrible death in America and, and how it's transcended throughout sport throughout the world. You may have seen in football the the, the players, uh, all the team are, are kneeling at the start, and there was you know very interesting story with Colin Kaepernick about him kneeling and about the ramifications for him, and and actually sport has a big part to play in in us I, I suppose showing the world that to do the right thing. Yeah, sports has a huge part to play, but you know this is this is nothing new. This is something I grew up uh, dealing with with police brutality. It was something my parents had to teach me and talk to me about and discuss. This was a normal, uh, this is a normal thing in my life. So now that everybody's talking about it and what Colin Kaepernick did years ago was he just tried to put a focus on and say, this exists. Just because you don't experience in your life doesn't mean these stories aren't real. And now because we have these mobile devices where we can show these things and mm. 
let yeah. people see what we've been saying for years. You know, good people that care are now saying, you know what? I might not have experienced this, but I see it and I understand the ramifications and how terrible this is. So, and um, I do think sports, and I, I love what sports do for the world. And sports have a way to bring people together. Always have, always will. So when sports stars, players, teams as a whole, uh, start to talk about things that are important in the world, people listen because even if they don't understand or agree, they have a connection with these players that allows them to listen and engage a lot different than they would with anyone else. We all know what, we, uh, what different people feel about politicians. Do they trust them? Do they not? But people have a special connection with sports people in general. So I do think it is our role. I always have. I, I, when Colin Kaepernick four years ago went out there first and uh, put his career on the line, the first thing I thought to myself was, would I be that kind of player? Mm. Would I be that brave? And now I can't answer that because I didn't play at that time, but I can do what I, I can step out there now and use my platform to have these discussions and not be scared any, of any ramifications to do so. So I'm very happy with the behavior of people that do not necessarily, that have not necessarily lived this adversity, but understand that their voice and their power in numbers getting behind this movement can only help yeah 100 percent. they're just much they're, they're relatable aren't they and it makes people think deeper and you know maybe twice sometimes and, and it, it, you know it it gets movement happening doesn't it really or change hopefully you know we, we see some change as well um nfl hasn't really it's one of the few sports in the world that hasn't been hit by the coronavirus epidemic because Super, the Super Bowl clearly finished beginning of, Jan, uh, beginning of uh, Feb. Um, and the season starts, you, you know, I might be wrong, the season starts August, September, correct? Mm -hmm. Over yes. there. Uh, will, the, will the guys be back in pre-season now? And if, and if they're not back in pre-season, is that due to coronavirus? Because the cases over there, uh, you know, certainly in, in some states like Texas and Florida, you know, they're, they're climbing, aren't they? And, and it's still quite worrisome for, uh, you know, for, for you guys. Yeah, and the one thing the NFL has the benefit of is time. They get to watch all these other leagues and what they do and how they adjust. So that gives them an advantage. So what they've done early on is they gave themselves flexibility with the league and the schedule timing. That's why they're not having the games over in the UK, which um, I'm devastated about. But the reason is the flexibility with the schedule. Yeah. So at any time, they can back up the league. If there's outbreaks throughout the league, they can put the league on pause and continue. So uh, that's what they've done. The virus is going to dictate everything that everyone does. So you just have to have contingency plans in place for when something happens that you just can't control. And it's all about the player safety. So once again, the league is watching everyone else and what they do but yet they have the flexibility to continue to push games back like they have recently with uh, probably eliminating the preseason. Yeah, yeah that's uh, yeah, it's a good point, actually. So it doesn't really do – well, hopefully there won't be much disruption, if any, at all. Yeah, um, but they, with you, Jason, whatever they got to do for be flexible. No, no, exactly. <laughs> for you, Jason, interesting. I mean, I, I understand that you're in, you know, the private wealth management now. Is that, is that yeah. right? Uh, advising yeah, yeah. Sort of entertainers yeah. and athletes, you know, on their wealth. And it sort of reminded me when, it, when you know, I looked you up and, and found this. It reminded me of the, yeah, I think it was an ESPN show, Broke. Did you yes. Broke? It was a brilliant show, yeah. about two hours, wasn't yeah. it? And it was mainly, yeah. you know, American sports stars yeah. that have made millions, you know, in NBA, NFL, you know, ice hockey, whatever. And how they sort of frittered away their money or, you know, you had sort of, um, you know, a lot, a lot of con men there, accountants uh, and what have you, and financial advisors. Um, and you're one of the good guys, though. You're one of the good guys. You've been doing this for, what, 10 years, over 10 years, helping them out? Yeah, yeah over 10 year, years. And I think one thing good about that um, special that came out was, as you know, you both have crazy experience as far as athletics and being in uh, locker rooms 
you know, and you're in a, and you're in a macho sport, right? You don't want to talk about weakness. And one thing about finance is when, when something bad happens in the NFL locker room, guys didn't talk about it. You know, you just kept it quiet because it, it displayed a little bit of weakness. You've been taken advantage of. And I think that that's exactly what shouldn't happen. You should talk about those things and help other players understand that these things can happen. And I think that uh, special allowed players to have those conversations which probably protected a lot of guys from situations that they would have walked into. So yeah, when I was playing, I knew early on in my career that it was something I wanted to do. I was helping guys in the locker room already. We were doing different kind of deals, especially real estate back then. And I just knew we weren't getting the advice that we needed. Really, we weren't getting educated. I mean, we were guys could go out in a week and figure out a game plan and do it on the fly. We had the mental capacity. It was just that People didn't want to spend the time to, to teach us because once you do that, uh, you've taken this veil off of our head and you can no longer take advantage of us. So take advantage of us. So I understood that if I could just educate guys on the process, terminology, and basically uh, connect the dots, that they could figure it out on their own. And, and that's what I tried to do. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, the amount of investments that we were asked to put money into, <laughs> and, and to, into abroad, like these, these great opportunities over yeah. in America, you can buy this plot of land. I bought land in South Africa. I've no idea what plot number it was or what it was, but it, it started out life. Well, I was going to be yeah. there. And it was just, I got a bit of wine out of it. That was it. But, oh, my God. I mean, the amount of <laughs> At least you got some get wine, advised. man. <laughs> yeah. You didn't get advised, mate, in the 2015 World Cup. You didn't get advised by, um, by, by the kit man about uh, a certain stock that was uh, worth investing in. A few players did, and they stuck uh, quite a bit of money for an English rugby player, not for an NFL player in there right. and I think they absolutely tumbled to about a tenth of the price or something <laughs> in three months it was like cheers well, for that. well listen thanks for your time it's been great I know you're uh, where are you based are you in England are you you actually where, where? I'm, I'm, I'm based out here yes oh great well we'd love to hook up some other time and uh, talking about the finances might be another opportunity we'd love to sort of uh, see what you're up to and see where we can sort of send the message out to all the rugby players if you're interested but thanks for your time and good luck with the homeschooling and if there was a position Nick you're saying on the wing I'm going to say you'd make a great fly half because he looks the part he looks hey, the part I like to hit man I can, I can tackle I can line. tackle I can tackle man I got you <laughs> Hard hitting fly off. There yeah. it is. Cheers. Thanks very much, Jason. Appreciate your Cheers, time. Fellas, I appreciate it. See you. Bye bye.